Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. Uh, like the, the, the actual grain bringing it back, I might bring, I might set a course play run up with that and we'll see if we can make it work. And, because course play does work with standard AI, it does actually do that. The only bit that I don't like about course play who are doing grain cart is that it will run right across the actual grain on the field if that's where the course is going to take it because it, it will sort of figure its own route so if you're going around the field on the outside rounds um course play will you know if you've got the ai vehicle extension because i think that that will also run with course play and although I, I don't know on that one, so don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. Um, but if it's going round, I know that if it's on the outside rounds of the field, course play will then just drive right across the middle of the field. And uh, it doesn't really care. It, it, it makes no difference to it whatsoever. It'll just drive right away across the middle of the field, which is a little bit of an odd thing for it to do. One thing that we will have a slight problem with, I think, is the patches in the field. Now... Some of those were from drought, as far as I can tell, and some of those were from uh, germination failed. So we, we've got a few patches across the field over there, and the AI vehicle extension is really good because it follows the edges of the field, but it could have a slight problem with those patches there in the field. So we will have to see how that pans out. Not quite sure yet. It'll be late summer, I'm guessing, that we'll be harvesting that. And then we've got the other crop over there in field four, I think it is, over the other side. That one will be autumn before we get to harvesting that one. I'd have, well, that's, that's, that's what I got my money on anyway. Um, what are you doing down over there? Oh, you're, st you're still going. You're still doing well. That one's doing just fine. See, he's, he's doing a great job. There may be the odd little bit of grass that we've got to go and pick up afterwards. And then once we've done that, that grass is actually dry. We're not going to need to do anything that. You see the difference in colour between that over there and what we've got right here. We cut this fairly early in the morning. And now the rest of the grass has dried out a bit, despite the rain we had yesterday. This has now dried out sufficiently that... Well, the, the standing grass has dried out sufficiently that it's not needing a hay turner on it. If it was damp and if it was falling as um, this darker green when it was being cut, we would need to go over it with a hay turner. But we don't, we're not going to need to. All of that over there, all we're going to need to do is go over it with a rake. That's it. There will not be anything else needed. Now we can take this one down. And the great thing about this now is that we can just do a straight run across the field. So we could either go around the edge of the field, which is what most people would normally do. Or we can be like me and be a rebel and go across the middle of the field. Now there's two options here. You can stick to a track, which is what a lot of people will do. Down the edge of the field, you stick to one single track all the way, and then it sort of minimizes the compaction issues that you might get later on. Uh, or you can do take a different route across the field every time so that you don't leave any track at all. Now, I'm going to go on a little bit further this time and start bringing it down, but I'm also going to allow it to pile up quite high. And then we'll go over it with the other tractor. Just shunt backwards and forwards quite a bit. Level it out again. But I'm now up. The, the reason I wanted it quite high is because I want to make sure that the grass actually goes up against the edge of the wall. Which when we come to doing our rolling and squish, squishing it all down again. That's going to make it easier because that will spread it out a little bit better up against the wall. Which will give us a more level surface to drive on when we bring the chrome back through. So we'll take this one back over to the field again and we'll get another load. I'll bring that in and then we'll roll it after we've done that. So here I'm going on a different route. And this, I think this is what I'll do is I'll just take... I'm going to go across this field. But if I take a different route each time, then there shouldn't be so much of an issue with any compaction. At least in theory. Right, I'm going to go back up there. You are almost done. How much have you got left? I can leave you going for a minute. We'll, we'll get started on picking up some of the grass here, and then we can go back over and have a look at the mower. The sooner we get all the mowing done, the better, because the hay, obviously, we've got to wait for that. And there's only so long that we've got for waiting. Grass growth stages. How much grass have we, are we going to get now 
between now and the end of the season. We get one more growth stage when we go from midsummer to late summer. And I think we get one more late summer into early autumn. And then I think that's it. So we'll get two growth stages, which is not enough to get these fields that we've cut to a harvestable stage. I think with all of the growth stages, if the grass is already planted and established, you get one full harvest, and then the second harvest is the first growth stage, or the first harvest stage, not the second harvest stage. The second harvest stage is the one that gives you the better yield, which is what we've cut on almost everything. Um, you, we won't get to that the second time round. You've only got um, enough growth stages to get you one good cut and then one not so good cut, which is a bit of a nuisance, but it is, it, it's kind of fairly realistic for a lot of places in the world. Um, although where I live, we get three cuts per year. The third cut is the one that's not quite so good, but three cuts per year is the is, is pretty normal. This is a fairly common thing. A lot of people will only take two cuts. Um, but three cuts is quite doable. Um, the reason that a lot of people only take two cuts is the quality of the silage that you get or the quality of the hay from the third cut is considerably lower than the quality you get from the first two. And that's to do, it's, it's not to do with um, like how much the grass has grown. Um, it's to do with the time of the year. Later in the year, you get less sugars going into the grass as it's growing. So the overall quality of the crop is poorer later in the year. And a lot of farmers that I know that do actually do three cuts in a year, um, they will... The first two cuts, very often the first cut is used for silage. Um, because that makes... That's got the highest amount of sugars in it. It's a massive rush to start with. Then second cut is very often used for hay. Although there are plenty of people around who will do the first cut for hay, um, hay is generally cut later than silage. So silage starts in May, hay generally starts in June. Um, and then you can get two more cuts out of it. And you can get two more cuts of silage out of it. I know some people will do silage, then hay, and then uh, back for another round of silage to finish off with. Um, although that is less common, it must be said. It's more, it's more likely what you would get is either two cuts of hay out of a field or three cuts of silage. That's the one that I've seen the most often. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be saying that uh, one does happen and one definitely doesn't happen because we know by now that that's simply not the case. That there is always an example of just about everything that can be found just about everywhere. There, there is no hard and fast way of anything being done. Um, but a lot of places I've worked that, or that I know of, either worked or that I know of, that have done three cuts um, would do either three cuts of silage, which just, you know, it's very simple, or it would be silage, hay, silage. That was generally the, the, the kind of the route that they would take. I, I need to turn sharper in towards this edge. I want to get this edge in here. Silage, hay, silage, right? And the, the first silage, if they're going to do clamp silage, that would go into the clamp. The second round, that would go... Uh, well, sometimes there would, you know, it would be split and you'd have a bit more going into the clamp. Um, but... That would usually be the hay, and then that would be put back, so you'd have some pretty good quality hay. And then the third cut would be silage, and because the, su you, the sugars, are, you know, a lot less sugar in it, um, it, it's quite a different cut, that last one. There's a lot less uh, nutrition coming out of it than you get for the rest of the harvest, so for the rest of the grass that you, you cut through the year. So that is either generally put to the side, to silage bales that are put to animals that don't need to be fattened up, something like that, um, yearlings, that, that, that sort of thing. 
there's there's a, a number of animals that don't need to have the absolute best when your animals are approaching the time for being sold uh, certainly on a beef farm and they the cattle are approaching the age of being sold you give them the best quality feed you possibly can because that's when you really want them to start putting on um the good stuff uh but when the animals are only a year old doesn't really matter you're, at that point you're just kind of keeping them alive you, you do want them to bulk up but if you've got a choice between the absolute best quality and then something not quite so good you give the yearlings the stuff that's not quite so good um and they will still do fine they will still do absolutely fine on it but they're the ones that you generally give and dry cows as well any cows that have been dried off um you you give them the the not quite so good stuff if they're in the last few weeks of pregnancy and they're starting to lactate again and starting to produce a little bit of milk as they're getting ready to calve, then you step up the um, quality of feed. And, I mean, it's... Every, everybody does it differently. There's so many different ways of doing it. So there's no sort of hard and fast way of saying this is how it's done. But um, there's only one place that I have ever... And I didn't actually work for them. I just worked on a neighbouring farm and we helped them out very occasionally. And that's the only place I've ever known that did three cuts of silage. And they put all three cuts of silage into one clamp. And they would, each time they did a cut of silage, they would open up the clamp. And then they would add in the next cut on top of the previous cut. And I know that this does happen. And I, I sort of, I've heard of it being done elsewhere. But a... a in my experience, more people would... I want to go that way, like that. There we go. Um, in my experience, more people would put the third cut and keep it separate than would just dump it in on top of the clamp that remains at the moment. And so it's sort of a, a, a strange thing, really, that so, like, some do and some don't. Some, some don't really see it as, as a big issue. Um, others sort of see it as well we're, we're kind of mixing clamp up a little bit it does depend on how you do your clamp some people will put you, you get a big wedge shape at the back of the clamp to start with and then how's it going to do it here it's going to it's going to go and do that I'm wondering if the precision option is making it do that weird thing there right that is starting to annoy me the way it's doing that that precision option. So let's put that back down to normal like that and go okay. And then I'll do that. And then I will do that. Right. Well, he immediately went where I wanted him to go. And now he's bringing this out round and he's, he's going to do... A little, where, where's he going now? He's going in there. Oh, I see. Now what are you doing? Right. Well, that's definitely not supposed to be happening. We want to bring you over this way. I'm just going to line you up kind of like that, I think. And then go. He should just follow down the edge of the field down there now. Without too much trouble. Uh, hang on a minute. Ah, that's why. It's because he switched. He had it on the wrong side quite know why I decided to go on the wrong side there but anyway so if I go like that he should now stay out on this outside edge and shouldn't have any problem there right that's better but anyway the the, th the whole three cuts of silage or um, two silage and one hay uh, two hay is, is uh, other one I've never heard of anybody being able to get three cuts of hay um, because hay, you generally let the grass grow for a little bit longer. So I've never heard of anybody actually getting three cuts of hay. I'm sure it does happen somewhere, but where I'm from, I've never actually heard of it. What are you doing? Wait a minute. That's what... <laughs> it's because I had that wrong. Right, that's... That's why we went wrong there. It's because I still had it on the straight lines. I did wonder what was going on there. It seemed a very strange and peculiar thing that it was trying to do. Let's try this again. I'm hoping that it will sort of straighten out a little bit. I don't quite know what it's going to do up through here, though. 
Is it going to curve round and sort of try and straighten that up? Or is it going to come out? Uh, it looks like he's going to curve Ray. He's going to carry on going. Okay, that's good. Yeah, go on down to this corner down here. Straighten out. Yeah, I've never heard of anybody doing um, three cuts of hay. And it's always like that there always seems to be debates with farmers as to... Well, not not necessarily all farmers. I'm, I'm not saying all farmers or anything like that. Now, now what are you doing? Well, that was partly, I think, because of that. But what on earth are you doing now? Sometimes it does really, really confuse itself, doesn't it? I think that part of the reason that it's... That's, that's turned itself round. That's now managed to completely turn itself round, so it's going the wrong way. Why have you done that? Oh, no, it's not. It should be... No, it's not turned itself round. That's going right. Uh, reverse with curve. Worker settings. That's everything that I want. It's just... It doesn't... It, it didn't like the, the way that it done it there. I mean, I'll start that one up again. Some, it, it just seems to be these curves sometimes. I think partly because of where it went out there on the edge of the field. It didn't like that bit. So I'm busy singing the praises of AI vehicle extension. I mean, admittedly, this is better with combines than it is with anything else. So um, I've not used it very much with a mower. It does seem... It, I mean, for the most part, it seems to be doing all right. I think the four-wheel steer is confusing a little bit that that does seem to be throwing it a bit because it, it seems to be doing it very aggressively when it comes to doing it's not flowing on its turns it seems to be a, doing aggressive turning and that does seem to be one aspect of it that i think is sort of throwing it a little bit and also you now that corner there is he's come around and he's actually turned that quite nicely there I think it was because of where it went with the tree up there. That that kind of confused it. And then it turned round and it accidentally cut the wrong bit and, and so on and so forth. I'm wondering if we're going to have another bit of an issue up there on that corner. As long as we... I mean... Yeah, like there. Some lit, just, just doing some strange, odd little things at times. So it's going to bring that one there and it should turn. I've gone right out to the very edge of the field there the edge of the field does impact it quite a bit that it definitely has an effect on the way the overall performance of the vehicle extension on here but now what are you going to do you're coming up that way but then it knows that it's got to turn the other way and sort of flow back in around that way i'm hoping that it's not going to try and do any of its stupid turns on the inside edge look like it's going to it's going to just follow the edge of the field there that's a really good thing because i'm hoping that we use the inside edge of this field to be the line that we will do all of our mowing on i think that would be a good line to follow just just because it it can this is the bit right here why is it gone and done that and then it's it's now it's going to go and confuse itself. It's going to get really, really confused on this. It does not like an internal corner on there. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going to watch it a second. And I want to see what it's going to do. How is it going to deal with that bit right there? Shouldn't come over to this side. It should now turn sharp to the left. But it's not. It's coming up there. It's bringing that up. It's still got the same sides on there, but it's, it's it's pushing right out across the field there. Yeah, there's there's a okay, so there's a definite error there with the AI vehicle extension with the mowers on this tractor. I'm not going to say anything about it being all mowers or all tractors or anything else because um, I'm. 
yeah, I'm, I'm just not going to say that because I don't think, I don't believe it is. I don't believe it is the case at all. But if I go there, there definitely seems to be an issue with the mowers on this tractor at least. And it might be the mowers in general. It might just get a little bit confused with the front and rear mounted mowers. And that may be throwing it a little bit. It, it may just be a little bit too much for it to cope with. So let you come out to that point there. Because I do notice that it seems to only pick up the front and back mowers together. It doesn't like to do them one at a time. Although it did do them one at a time there, didn't it? Oh, I, th I don't think it did. So it does, that does throw it a bit. Now, is it going to straight it? Is it going to straighten it up? I think it is. I think it's going to bring that curve round. It's going to straighten that one up. With everything that's happened on here, I'm very tempted to let it run round one more time. Either that, or just put the standard hired help going. Um... How shall I do this? You know what? I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it there. And I know that we got a bit of a pig's ear on the inside corner over there. That bit I'm not quite so worried about. I'm thinking what we'll do is if we come down here, this bit here is going to cause a slight problem, isn't it? So rather than doing around the big curve down there, which I think is just going to cause problems, I'm going to do a bit here. I'm just going to let the AI vehicle extension do one pass across there, because it can. Save me turning on all the mowers. So I'm going to do one bit there. But no, what I was thinking, I'm, I'm going to actually do the curve. I'm going to let it run. I'm going to let it work that curve. I'm going to let it work inside of the curve up there as well. Despite the fact that it seems to have no clue about what it's doing there at all. And... I'm going to see what it does. I'm going to see how it finishes up the field and what, what it does ultimately to finish up the field. Because, like, this bit here, I don't know what it was trying to do right there. I can sort of see why it's doing the bit that it was doing over on the piece over there that we were looking at. And I kind of understand why it's doing what it's doing. It's where it's, you know, you can sort of look at the logic and you can sort of see, oh, it's, it's, it's trying to straighten up. It's trying to get that, and then it's missed where the next bit of the field is. So it's just sort of going back to where an existing bit of the field is. So I want that one on. I want that one going left, but I want this one going up and down like that. And I can switch that one off. And I can press H on here. And it will get to a certain point, and then it will decide that it's got to turn back round and go again. So is it going to go all the way round this corner, all the way up the field before it turns round and comes back down this way? That's the big question. And I have had this going before where it will go up and down the field for a bit, but then a corner becomes just a tiny little bit too much for it to cope with. And so what it does is it ends up sort of working a really short bit. It, it sort of goes round the corner, but then it doesn't go back round the corner. It just sort of stops. And that's the end of it. Now, this bit here, is it going to go... Oh, nice! Okay, that I like. I like that it's done that. But this is the bit that I mean right here. It could decide that it's too much for it to be able to cope with when it comes back on that one. And so it'll turn around and, and go the wrong way. Right, you're going to come up there. Then you're going to turn. Then it's going to back up so that it straightens everything up. Go to there. And now lower the mower down and it will go. But how far is it going to go? Is it just going to go to one little bit and then try and turn round because it can't cope with it? Or is it just going to follow the flow of the edge of the field, which is what I'm hoping it's going to do? Excellent. Right, Zach. <laughs> I spoke too soon. I was about to say... It's actually done everything that I was hoping it would, and it has not even come close to doing what I was hoping it would. It has now... I don't know what it's done. It's read the edge of the field. <laughs> wow! 
What are you doing? Why are you all the way over here? <laughs> Stopped work unexpectedly. Unknown reason. It's not an unknown reason. The reason you stopped work unexpectedly is because you're a moron. I don't quite know why you've got to be quite this moronic about things that you do, but apparently that's something that you, you need to do. Okay, so I will start that one there, and then I will go and I'll start that one there, and then I will lower the mowers down like this. And I'm going to carefully blend in on this corner a little bit like this. Because I want to straighten this out a little bit. I'm still hopeful that we can make this work. Always hopeful. I'm always hopeful. Let's bring that one round like that. And then we'll go up here. So then we're going to follow this over here like that. And I'm going to bring this one in like this. It's going to go like that, there, and it's going to go kind of like this. So I'm hoping that that is going to be enough over to here. Let's, let's bring it to that point right there, and let's just make sure that we're going in the correct direction, and no, don't even think about it. Am I, I, I was going in the wrong direction, wasn't I? It needs to be that way. Yeah, I, I, I changed it, and I shouldn't have done. Right. You carry on there, and you carry on following the curve of the field. I got a feeling it's not going to like the curve of the field up there when it comes back to it. We'll let it go down there and do his turn a minute. And oh, I want to go the other way, don't I? I need to go like that there. You go and do that bit a minute, and we will go up here, and we will gather a little bit more of the silage. We've got another... Another load that we want to gather up before we're done on here. And we'll keep a half an eye on where that tractor is. And when it comes back up this way, we'll have another look at it. Just to see how it copes with going around the corner. We've still got silage that we need to pick up. We've got this bit right here. And then once we've done this field, we've got the rest of the small field over there. That will be all the silage that we need. Then we're going to be doing the hay. We've got the small field, the little field too. Then we've got the field that's working on at the moment. And there's one more slightly bigger field that will also need to be done. We've got quite a bit of grass left here from when I was using the uh, course play to go around the outside edge of the field just to gather all of that up. Worked quite well, actually. Um, went right round the very edge, did everything. I was quite pleased with how it panned out, actually. And you can come up here now. Where is that track? That tractor has... Right, he's, he's just about reached the corner up there. I can see him over there. What's he doing? Is he doing anything daft yet? He's going slowly. He looks like he's still, he looks like he's still moving across the field, though. It's like he might actually be doing what we want him to do. So I'm going to just bring you to there, and I will go... This way. He is doing what we want him to do. Look at that. He's, he's followed that curve all the way round. And I'm hoping that the curve is sufficient now. Well, it's, 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 not a, it, it's a much weaker curve. I'm hoping that this curve is now right. So that it will just keep going around the curve. And it won't do anything daft like trying to stop halfway through. It's a really good job that we don't have windrows left on the ground on this field. But then we wouldn't. Not on this field. This field here. Well... Uh, not that we wouldn't. If we were leaving windrows lying on the ground on this field, I'd either have been working from that headland on that side or way over the other side doing the straight lines. I wouldn't have been going around the curve edge of the field that I'm using at the moment. And I can see from where the curve is, like following that track, there is, I think, if we had manually gone around a second time... Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.